It's a very um, interesting and um, deep discussion with patients in terms of how we're going to decide when to start treatment and how to start treatment. Patients that have a very functional tumor, they're secreting hormones that you probably should want to control, and patients as well, it's easy. You start them on a somatostin analog that will help to um, improve the quality of life, reducing symptoms as well as probably will prolong survival of these patients. Patients that don't have any functional um, symptoms um, and have a tumor that we believe will respond to a somatostin analog because either the octreo scan or the um, uh, gadolinium 68 is positive, you can have a very balanced discussion what is more important because even though uh, somatostin analogs are very well tolerated, you can still have some side effects. You can have um, long-term diarrhea from pancreatic enzyme deficiency. You can have some fatigue. Um, it can alter, you know, your um, um, sugar levels and um, other things. So for that particular patient, they have a very indolent tumor and does not have any symptoms from the tumor, and that's when you can uh, have a very um, thorough discussion and deep discussion with the, with the patients when is the best time to um, start treatment because it could be very um, well accepted to just monitor this patient with scans for some period of time before you're triggering the, the idea of starting a treatment. So in terms of ad, um, advantages of one or the other, although trials have been done um, on that, uh, patients uh, that have received both, I mean, I have said that uh, lorreotide tends to hurt less because it's a sub um, subcutaneous injection over um, intramuscular. That's one of the things that patients have mentioned to me that they feel better with lorreotide. Uh, the second issue is that because it's already ready to go injection, you don't have to mix, the waiting time to get it done is much faster. So patients are in and out of the clinic uh, much faster than with octreotide. But again, this hasn't been really compared um, in a, a prospective study to see if these um, observations from patients are actually real. Sentastatin has to be administered intramuscularly. Um, if it's not injected into the muscle, if injection to subcutaneous tissue, um, the absorption is, is suboptimal. It still works to some extent, but it's uncomfortable for patients. It leaves a lump, and the control of the syndrome is not, not quite as strong. So Matulene is meant to be administered as a deep subcutaneous injection. It comes in a pre-filled syringe, so it's actually quite a bit easier for, for nurses to, to administer. It's more efficient. Um, and if it happens to go into the muscle, the absorption is similar. So I would characterize the administration of um, somatulene as a little bit easier than that of sandostatin. Whether patients have a preference for one drug versus the other is, is really hard to say.